Hello and welcome back to Fallout 4. Uh, this is Kalan and this is episode 28, I believe. Going great guns. Um, and we've just uh, been talking to Piper and the mayor and I had a little chat with Danny. Now I'm going to head inside Diamond City and I think this is the official way. But I did soul. see this. If you need anything, I did see this. I want to see where this goes. I do like me some side entrances. Ooh, funky music. Nice. And an accurate dial. Okay, where am I? Oh. Oh, who, oh there you are. Call elevator button. Nice. Whoa. Oh, okay, that's not a window. I thought it was glass there. That is cool. What's that say? Push it. Oh, that's uh, public occurrences. That's a newspaper. Cool. All right. Okay. Let's. Oh, don't take secret. Okay. Hello. Mayor's in no mood to talk about any of this Ah, uh, so this is the mayor's area. For a right. Okay. Permit. I can't help you. Uh, what was that about Wait. synths? What was that about synths? Oh no, I'm not saying anything. I like my job. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> uh, and you, and are? you are Geneva, the mayor's secretary. I handle all the day to day. Okay. Let's hear the well, let's hear about the permit. We have one home available. It's That's in the center of convenient. Town, right near the market. You can do whatever you like with the interior, and all the tools you need to make your own furnishings are provided at no extra charge. Um two thousand caps. I do not have two thousand caps, so I won't be able to get it at the moment. Tell me more about this house. The previous owner bought an adjacent warehouse and knocked down a few walls, so it's bigger than most. And he left behind his old tools, so you'll have everything you need to modify the. Um, I don't have the required Let me it over. money, the so time. I don't want to risk some sort of charisma check. Um, no funny business around the mayor. Got yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Okay. Gotta love that music. Really good music. Hello. I don't say it's really good, but you know what I mean. It's funky. And it takes a while. Where the hell's that green light coming from? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Yeah. Okay, let's moosey, moosey. Let's moosey on in. Okay. Ooh. I mean, I want to explore. What have we got? What have we got? What are you? What is this? It's a thing. What thing is it? It's a thing that does something. Okay. Oh, this is the elevator. Oh, so I could have taken the, the lift down from the mayor's office there. That's why it was dumb of me not to think about that. Uh, I thought the call elevator button was oh, spawning people. I thought the um, elevator button was for the one I just went in, but that wouldn't make any sense. So. Why? Hello there. Hi, Hawthorne Residence Key. Eh? So lovely to see more young people up here in the stands. We're also, well, old. <laughs> okay, cool. Can I talk to you? Your person? You should meet my grandpa. How do I know your name yet? Oh, not that he would ever come up here. No, Hawthorne has too much of his mother in him. I'm not sure what that means. Oh, I can't. Oh, okay. I probably shouldn't be picking this right with you standing there. That's actually her house. <laughs> I will not go into her house. Oh, I thought this was the bar. Right. Oh, this is the bar. I'm just getting so confused. I may have been programmed to serve, but in your case, I shall do so disdainfully. Oh. Let me know when you're ready to order. Oh, well, fuck you then, Wellington. Yeah, there a problem? There a problem? No problem at all. My programming dictates that I serve all customers in the colonial cat house. Even those that obviously don't belong. Just know that my senses indicate that you have dangerously. How do you have a sensor for class? Let's see what you got. <sighs> Very well. I'm not liking him. And I don't care for anything he's got. Do I want to sell anything? Uh, yeah. I'm going to give you some rags. I hope you're happy with that. I hope you're really happy. I might steal your stuff later. Well, now, but whatever. 
I can't even steal something out of the trash. Okay, let's mo move. And this is the Colonial Tap House. Uh, yeah, let's go straight in here. Exploration! Let's go. Take it easy. Oh. I don't think she wants to leave just yet. Hey, this is between me oh, and my oh. wife. Why don't you mind your own damn thing? I'm gonna save. I haven't saved in quite a while, and I might need to do some Business charisma checking here. Oh god, Paul, why do you always have to make a scene? Yeah, Paul. Pour me another drink, Henry. Paul's really it. Darcy, I just want you to come home. I'll be home later. I can't believe you'd do this to me, Cook. Do what to you, Paul? You smug bastard. You keep away from my wife, goddammit. You'd better get out of here before you do something stupid. Oh. You son of a bitch. Don't hurt him, Henry. Mother oh yeah, go on. Puss bucket. Mother puss bucket. Love it. Wow, Paul, you really didn't do much go there. Go on. Get out of here. I'll be at home, Darcy. Taking care of our son. Just having a look. Shotgun shells. No shotgun, though. No. Alright, okay. And... I don't know why I'm so curious. I'm not going to actually steal anything, but... Okay. Uh, but <laughs> okay, okay, they worked that out. Sorry, I had to see that. Things are usually a lot quieter around here. Perfect place to drink if you're buying. Uh, what was that argument about? What was that about? argument about? Uh, nothing much. You see, Darcy here likes to relax and enjoy life from time Bye to time, then. and her husband Paul doesn't. He's not a bad guy, really. Just a little uptight. Too bad he can't learn to relax, huh, Darcy? Shut up. I don't come here to talk about Paul. You there! I haven't seen you in here before. Why don't you make yourself useful and buy me a drink or something? Hmm, why don't you make yourself useful yourself? I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Buy your own drink! Mm. Hey. You don't look like you need another drink. Aren't you all high and mighty then? Why don't you get lost <laughs> so I can drink in peace? Lighten up, Darcy. This isn't your own private bar, no matter what you might think. Anyway, I got a bar to run. Ordering? Uh, so is this your place? your place? That's right. Owner, bartender, sympathetic ear. I try to provide a little oasis from the hardships of life. Name's Cook, by the way. Henry Cook. Henry Cook. Let me know if I can get you anything. Just sounds like Hungry Cook. Um, let's see what he's got. got. To browse. Bottoms up. Uh, eh. I mean, why not? Let's have a beer. When in Rome, drink alcohol. That's what I say. Jeez. Nicely kept. Hey. Don't be shy. Sit down and have a drink. I'm sitting. And you got plenty of You're drinks in the only that. spot worth going to around here. I am just annoyed her too much. She's I reckon I could have got some information out of her, but I don't know. Don't have much time for people who um, ignore their family. Okay. Uh, what we got over here, it's another person's house, but it's, I can just enter this one. Codman residence. residence. The Codman residence. Hello? <laughs> oh. You just walked right up into the stands, didn't you? I like your stone. What? what? Do I have a big target on my face that says lower class? Hello. You again? What? Prefer the company of old men? We have the benefit uh, of oh. years of experience, you know. <laughs> ah, don't mind me. I, I won't. Thank you. Yeah. Ooh, look how well off he is. He has dirty water. Um. Mentats, medics. I just doing a little look, really. Ooh. Bullets, some stim packs. So he's just got a standard house. Fair enough. I guess for Diamond City it might be quite big. Uh. Okay, let's uh let's mosey on down to the proper area. Away from all the uh egocentric people. Can I even steal why is there drugs there anyway? <laughs> 
foot on quite a show, huh? Hi, Clements. Uh, <laughs> look, I'm just walking through. Clear off. This place is all kinds of strange. This place is all kinds of strange. I guess we are a little different. Most settlements in the Commonwealth don't have people yelling at the top of their lungs about the Institute. Anyway, don't let it get to you. Life here is still a hell of a lot safer than out there in the Commonwealth. Hey! The screaming paper girl says otherwise. I guess she does. So what brings you to the Great Green Jewel? Um... Look for someone Looking for someone who's gone missing. Gone missing? Who is it? Friend? Relative? A baby boy kidnapped. That's just my line, apparently. A baby boy <clears throat> kidnapped. A baby boy? Really? I am afraid missing people don't get found in Diamond City. God seems to have turned a blind eye to them. And with all the fear of the Institute in people's hearts, they've turned a blind eye as well. Oh, well, that beer was good. Ooh, I'm lost, Pastor. Please help. Oh, this looks like an easy skill check. Come on. I'm lost, Pastor. I need help. Please. Well. Hooray! I hope so. But there is someone who might be able to help. Nick Valentine. He's a detective. Saved a lot of lives over the years. But so many more stay missing. And trouble has a habit of sticking to him. Classic. Um... 1950s detective, I'm hoping. Oh. Trouble sticks to me, too. <laughs> I blame industrial strength epoxy. I suppose a sense of humor is a sign of resilience. So whatever you need to get by, take care now. I hope Nick can help you. I'll leave you then. Do I? Oh, so I could go into the chapel. I'll just quickly check out the chapel. See if it's got anything in there that's worth looking at. Uh... Can I... Am I not allowed to... There we go. Not sure which god I'm supposed to be praying to. Pastor says it doesn't matter. Fair enough. Lots of stuff in here. Oh, this is a bloody small church. Oh, it's you. Glad to see you stop by the chapel. You holding up? Uh... <laughs> not looking to make friends, Pastor. Well enough. For your sake, I hope things aren't always just well enough. We take pride in making things a little better each day. Could be the same for you. Now, if you ever need a quiet place to sit down and ponder the Almighty in whatever form strikes your fancy, we're always open. Uh, you don't practice so any particular religion here? Any particular religion here. As long as you believe in something, you're welcome. Diamond City is full of people trying to build a better life. I just don't want them to forget what makes them human while they're at it. So the chapel is open, 24 hours a day, to whatever form of worship you like. Ah, as long as that's very open-minded. Like, I've wasted my time with that, okay. Thanks, Pastor. Feel free to make yourself at home. Okay. You should really talk to the pastor. I, I just did. I, were you not? I suppose you were praying still. Okay. Well, the, the paper girl's gone. The synthetic truth. Let's read it. Uh, oh. Oh, okay, next. <laughs> I was like, that. that's not very long. Noodles! We all eat them, we all love them, and Diamond City's Power Noodles has supplied the sustenance for the past 15 years. From the stilted mechanical cadence of Takahashi's program Japanese, to the fragrant steam that wafts from each bowl, to the scalding tang of each delicious, delicious mouthful. The ordering and eating of noodles is but one of many shared human experiences. Or is it? I was struck by this very question as I sat at the counter of Power Noodles last Wednesday just after 5pm enjoying a dinner I had so many times before. That's when I noticed our own, our very own mayor, McDonough, sidled up to a stool and engaged in the very same reach ritual. Right hand extending, mouth opening, teeth chewing, yes, eating noodles. The shared experience of almost every Diamond City resident. So it must have also seemed to the residents of Diamond City nearly 60 years ago on an uncharacteristically warm May evening in 2229, as they sat around this very same counter. 
But that was before the days of Takahashi and his noodles, when the bar served not noodles but ice cold nuka colas, frothy beers, and stiff shots of whiskey. The barman's name was Henry, and that night he facili facilitated the shared human experiences of drinking, smoking, talking, laughing. That is, until tragedy struck. There aren't many among us who are old enough to remember that evening, although some of the city's ghoul residents certainly could have, had they not been forcibly removed, thanks to Mayor McDonough's anti-ghoul decree of 2282. But there is one person among us who does remember distinctly the events of that evening. Respected matriarch Eustace Hawthorne who record, recounted her story in a Public Occurrences exclusive interview. Oh, I was there, all right, sitting right at the bar, sure as you're sitting right in front of me now, 22 years old or so, and just looking to have a good time. I was safe behind the wall, we all were, so what's the harm? And let me tell you that Mr. Carter made it easy. He came into town early that day, he said he was from out west somewhere. It didn't really matter. What did matter was his smile, his laugh, and the way he'd make everyone feel at ease. That night at the bar, we all just sort of crowded around him. Everyone wanted to exchange a word, or hear this about the state of the Commonwealth. And Mr. Carter, he was all too happy to oblige. It was just so wonderful, until it wasn't. Eustace continued her account of that evening and the moment when things turned sinister and the truth about Mr. Carter was revealed. We'd been drinking and carrying on must have been three hours. Mr. Carter had four or five drinks that time. He seemed a bit drunk, I guess, like the rest of us. Then something just sort of happened. He was smiling, but the smile sort of went from his face to all an instant and then his cheeks started twitching kind of funny i remember watching him clear as if it happened just yesterday he reached inside his coat took out a revolver and blam he shot henry the barman right in the head didn't hesitate didn't show any emotion mr carter killed henry as casually as we were paying for a drink but his check his cheek never did start twitching let me tell you all hell broke loose after that what Eustace is describing is, of course, the infamous, infamous event known as the Broken Mask, when the people of the Commonwealth learned for the first time that the Institute, the shadowy scientific organisation responsible for the creation of combat androids, has actually succeeded in creating a model so advanced it could effortlessly infiltrate human society. Unbeknownst to the people of Diamond City, the Institute had somehow evolved their androids into true synthetic humans. Synths. After he shot Henry, that Mr. Carter shot three or four other people too. Like, oh sorry, it's just Eustace. After he shot Henry, that Mr. Carter shot three or four other people too. Like I said, all hell broke loose. The guards came running, they opened fire, and Mr. Carter, he kept on shooting and throwing people around left and right. Finally, those guards put him down. Seemed like they killed him, a man who flipped his lid, gone crazy, and he lay there like a dead crazy man. Sure enough, it was horrible. But then we saw the plastic and the metal. This is one of them early synths, you see. And we realized it wasn't a man at all. It was then that we all knew the Institute wasn't just out there. The Institute was everywhere now, among us. The voice kind of changed halfway through there. It was never determined precisely why the synth known as Mr. Carter went on his killing spree. Some suggested he had been somehow remotely controlled by the Institute, who wanted to test his combat effectiveness. Still, others felt that he had simply malfunctioned, a hypothesis supporting, supported by the twitching cheek, and was never meant to kill anyone. But that, at that time, the why hardly seemed important. What mattered was the Commonwealth... The humans of the Commonwealth have been truly infiltrated by an organisation whose intentions and motives were, and still are, a complete mystery. Using a model of synth even less advanced than the ones the Institute, Institute has in service today. Which brings us to noodles. Specifically, the noodles consumed by Mayor McDonough last Wednesday night in the same spot that Mr. Carter the synth went haywire and mercilessly killed several people after spending hours sharing an experience the people of Diamond City assumed was reserved for members of the human race. They were wrong. Are we? Interesting. Nice. Nice and well read as well. Well uh, written as well. Not well read. It was poorly read by me. The shock. I said, oh, oh, there's more synthetic truths. More scissors. Oh, I can actually. Oh, there's actually a back door. This is where Piper will be then. <clears throat> oh, okay. I thought, we were, I thought we were in the same spot. Hot plate, gas canisters. There's lots of useful stuff. Cigar box. A washer. A washer. Privileged. Uh, okay, oh, that's the printing press. And here's the little girl. Hello. Oh. I was just going to say hello to your sister. Is that right? Well, hello. Free paper to God, I'm so fucking creepy to kids. Just grabs you in the night, at least we warned you. <laughs> it's a kid, but screw Free it. Sarcasm. Paper. Sounds like quality. I'm serious. 
The Institute takes people. You should read up if you're sticking around. I already have. Um, but I'll to get her perspective Institute? on it. You ain't heard of the Institute, mister? They snatch people up in the night and no one hears from them again. It's all in the paper. Better read up before they grab you, too. Who's gone missing? Who's gone missing? Drifters, residents, stadium seat snobs. Seems every year or so, someone's gone. And we all know why. So you better be a newcomer. The Institute is out there. And they'll grab you, too. Like I said, it's all in the paper. Seems like uh, I found the the boss for this uh, game. Probably the Institute. Um, I believe you. Thanks. You are a real lost lamb in the wolf's den, mister. <clears throat> Thanks. Oh, I actually got the paper. Cool, okay. Hiya. Piper. Glad you dropped by. You holding up, Blue? Ha. <laughs> uh, I want to say sarcastic, but I actually want to ask why she, uh, Like, you know... Uh, no, I'm going to be sarcastic. I have to stick to my guns. So, today's been great. Hmm, interesting. You mentioning that, seeing as you're from a vault. Jumpsuit's a bit of a giveaway. So here's the deal. I want an interview. Your life story in print. I think it's time Diamond City had a little outside perspective on the comic. Yeah, I'll come up for that. You do that, and uh, I'll tell you what. I'll come with you. Watch your back while you get used to the world above ground. You look a lot better without the bloody grease sheen on you. <laughs> Here's your headline. Local man says no. <laughs> oh, but I want to say yes. But I also want to be sarcastic. Ah, uh, I. Mind speaking up? 